Amen. A.W. Tozer, a great Bible teacher, said, Lord, your will, nothing more, nothing less. This should be the motto of every Christian. If you are saved today, say amen. amen. Nothing more, nothing less than the will of God. If you miss His will, you're going to miss a lot of things. Hebrews 11. Everybody stand in Hebrews 11. <clears throat> Don't look for Hebrews in the Old Testament. It's not there. It's in the, in the New Testament. Titus, Philemon, Hebrews. We're going to read from verse number 23, okay? All together, all together. Now read together, pronounce the words correctly. Stop in the comma, and let's read verse 23. Ready, go. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was he three months of his parents, because they saw he was a proper child, and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. Wait for a while. You see that, that phrase, proper child? It means that Moses was a pleasant child to look on, to look upon. There are children that when you look at them when they are young, very beautiful, very pleasant. You like to kiss them, you like to pinch their, 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 uh, their face, their, their cheek, you, very pleasant. And Moses was like that. Moses was like that. Verse 24, go. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect and the recompense of the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured his seeing him as the who is invisible. If you look at the word endured, it does not mean that, it means that he persevered. Amen. He persevered as seeing him who is invisible. Faith is going to see things in the future that many people, others, will not be able to accept you, are, you have faith. Yeah. Today I'm going to speak on the subject, making the right choice will earn you a great success. Making the right choice will earn you a great success. Father, we thank you for your love for us and thank you for allowing us to become a part of the movement of people around the world. The opportunity to preach the gospel, the opportunity to let them know that there's only one Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. There are many gods that people are worshiping today, but Lord, you are the only one that can bring us to heaven because you are the only one that died on the cross to pay for our sins. We give you the glory tonight. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you, Bejire. We are going to look at the life of one of the greatest persons in the Bible. His name is Moses. His name is Moses. Moses was an ordinary man. Just like you and me, living in Cebu City. Ordinary, but he accomplished extraordinary tasks in his Christian life. You can be an ordinary person, but my friend, if you make the right choices, you're going to see great things in your life. A few months ago, when President Duterte retired or got out of Malacanang, he went back to Davao. There were reporters that were at the gate of his house. And said, Mr. President, you are welcome to, uh, to your house. We are here, been waiting for you in this gate because we know you're coming in. We have one question for you before you enter your house. 
What are the legacies that you can say to us that was an accomplishment of your six years in the Duterte administration? You know what President Duterte said? He said, I can tell you nothing. All I want you to know is look around if there was anything that happened in six years. The question came in, Mr. President, why is it that you cannot mention those, th those things that, are, that have been accomplished? He said, because those things were accomplished not because of my money. They were built and performed, and it is there you can see it. Because you paid your taxes. Hello? My friend President Duterte is an ordinary man. But he made the right choice. And I would say carefully that President Duterte is one of the greatest presidents that this country has ever had. <laughs> Moses was just an ordinary person, just like you are. But the choices he made, made him to accomplish extraordinary things. He is the greatest leader of all time. Dr. Fowler, I hear Dr. Fowler in Lisbon, Virginia, and I said, ladies and gentlemen, Moses is the greatest leader of all time. Nobody has ever led that group of people, 20, 000, 20 million people led by one man. No other than Moses. He had received the Ten Commandments from God. He had the children of Israel. He, he, he led the children of Israel out of 400 years of slavery. He authored the first five books of the Bible, which is called the Pentateuch. He was used by God to perform many miracles. Moses is the greatest person. You say, Pastor, why is that? Because he, he, he dealt with four issues in life. He made a great choice in four issues of life. Number one, who am I? That is identity. Today, many of you do not know who you are. I am a Dishalva. I will never be anything else. When I was in, when, when, when I went to college in 1953 in Central Philippine University, I had people from Antiki, some from Cotabato, some from Indonesia, some from Formosa. It used to be Formosa, now Taiwan, and many places in the world. My classmates. We have some people from Antiki, from Aklan, you know, from Washington, all over Panay. And I found out that many of them would say they are, they are from there, here, and they look like different, but when you go to their home, you find out who they are. When I went to college, I always tell them I, I was born in a poor barrio of God. I grew up in the barrio. I grew up with carabaos, goats, horses, and cattle. I was in the field. I learned to plow when I was 13 years old and never stopped because it was the Second World War. I learned to love the carabao. I would pass through the carabao in the grassland, and when I am tired, I sleep at the back of the carabao. Because the back of the carabao is wide enough for a single bed. How many of you have slept at the back of the carabao? Many of you do not know who you are. <laughs> and if you can tell your story, it would be something amazing that God has brought you to Cebu City to be what you are today. Amen. Do you know why you are what you are today? Because you made a choice. Amen. Because yesterday was a bleak 
moment to look forward for tomorrow. But my friend, when I was in the barrio, there was a dream in my heart. I said, Lord, I'm not going to stay here. I was thinking of things that I will do by the grace. I was not yet saved because I was saved September 14, 1956. But as a little boy, I did not want the difficulties of the barrio. Many of you know what I mean. Yeah. To wake up in the morning and feed those chickens and, oh, I tell you, fish the water, get the water from the river, wash the plates, all of that. My friend, kung bagyo pagyot, purting to nawa magwan ugto ng kwanoy ng mahugas plato. Kinsay turno karon maghugas o plato. Wa bi mo tingog. Kay puting to nawa ang tubig. Pero kaon na ta, kaon. Mga isa, ako yung number one, tapos sa mesa. Who am I? That is identity. Hello? That is identity. Moses was born as a Hebrew slave. He knew that. He was a Hebrew slave. But he was raised as the son of Pharaoh's daughter in the palace. Slave, royalty. Secondly, he was born as a slave, but living in the palace. And this was a, a situation of contrast. He was born as a slave and, and raised in the palace. And then number three, he had to decide whether he was a Jew or an Egyptian. Whether he was a slave or a royalty. Remember that the decision that he made will, af will affect his life. If he says, I am the grandson of Pharaoh, one, he will, have, he will be famous. Number two, he will be fortune. He will have fortune. Number three, he will have luxuries of life. Number four, he had a promising career. Number five, he will become the next Pharaoh. He was, the, he was the son of Pharaoh's daughter. And there is no other Pharaoh. Pharaoh had no more son, only one daughter. If he says, I am a Jewish slave, number one, he will be rejected. He will be despised. He will be thrown out of the palace. And he will not even be looked at by anybody in the, in the palace. Because he is a Hebrew slave. Who am I? Folks, the thing that made Moses one of the greatest leaders of all time is because he did not want to tell a lie. Amen. Amen. And there are many Christians today that could not reach the next, la the, the next level of success. Do you know why? He told a lie. It's wrong to tell a lie. It's wrong to tell a lie. Have you ever told a lie? No, 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 no. You are telling a lie. Because there is nobody here that did not tell a lie. Come on, amen? Oh. There's nobody here that all tell a lie, that did not tell a lie. There's nobody here that did not cheat. I had weeping many, many times because I cheated in the food in the house. And it's always that way. Moses did not tell a lie. He was a man of integrity from the very beginning. He was a man of character. Look at verse number 24. The Bible says in Hebrews eleven twenty four, by faith Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. It would have been easy for him to say, I am the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Because Pharaoh's daughter was the queen. Princess, pretty, rich, and a lot of luxuries. 
But again, Moses did not want to tell a lie. He knew down deep in the catacombs of his heart, he was a Hebrew slave. He left the door open to say, he said to his identity, I am not the son of Pharaoh's daughter. I am what God made me to be. I was born in a poor family. I could never tell a lie that I was a rich person. You have to be honest with yourself. And all along, the poor people in our neighborhood called us poor. If the poor people call you poor, you are really very poor. But that did not mean to me. Because I was, I was growing up, we have a lot of food, we have things to do. I did not know that I was poor. I thought I was very rich. Yeah, because you have plenty of food. And before, your, your qualification of being, being rich is plenty of food. Wala man kang ikwarta diri. Kung siya ikwarta niyo dito, puros mo ito, yuta dito. And if you had any money, it only arrives at the end of the month. You know how much? 17 pesos per month. Ang swedo sa akong papa. 17 pesos. Kaniad tong panahon na mo, 17 pesos, dako kayong kwarta. Usa ka sintabong maruya, duha ka, duha ka buhok na ibutang niyo sa iyong naong, Dili makita ni mong naong. Kanang, so kanang, okay, kanang pay pay? You know pay pay? Duha ka buhok, one centavo. So magpalit ko ni Ana, akong kano na usa, ang usa, butang sa bulsa. Pagbutang ko sa usa iskwilahan, ang ingin sa teacher, what, what is that? Ang akong baon, maruya, nabasa ang akong short pants. But I know my identity. I know who I am. I know where you come from. Today I know a son in Australia. They come from Cebu City. And can you imagine his daddy is pastor, pastoring a church. His the mommy is a Christian. They are wonderful people, but yet he is the one that did not like to read the Bible today. Do you know why? He forgot where he came from. And don't ever forget, it does not matter who you are, God knows where you came from, God knows your yesterday. The memories of the past will never be erased from you, and the records in heaven will never change, because God's ink does not blot. And there is no erasure in heaven. Whatever you are, however you are born, there it will be recorded. Who am I? Secondly, what am I going to do with my life? The first one is identity. The second one is my responsibility. What am I going to do with my life? When I was growing up, I did not like to go to school, tell you honestly. Because school is very tiresome, you have to bring your books, you have to study, and you're a... I am Pepe. This is my dog. My dog is Bantai. I am Pilar. This is my home. I have this garden. Pepe and Pilar ba? Nagamon ang Pepe and Pilar? Oh, naminyo sila. So one day my father brought me to the pier. He said to me, "You come with me because I want to I want to show you the people that did not like to go to school." I said, "What is he talking about?" My father heard that I didn't like to go to school. I was lazy. 
So he said to me, Hey, so he brought me to the pier, and there was this man, heavy loaded, just like that. And he said to me, You see that man unloading a big sack of heavy thing from the boat from Manila, then going out to the to the to the to the pier? I said, Yes. That's what you will be if you go to school. My son did to run appear. Like they said, Naku, I will go to school. Tinaud na. Kaya kung wako mag-eskwila, to ako. Ga, o sa na? Bakarde kargador. Kargador. Lisod kayo. That was my responsibility. And my friend, you do not make excuses and blaming other people for kind of your life. No, you do not blame that. Ani yeah. magud ko gud kay sa gamay pa ako. Siyo gisumbag per me. Di magud nila pakanon kana to kay kung mukha ang ko na ko gitlog ka ng matakwa ang dalungan. They blame. Ana. Hindi kauna mo kina ito gabi eh. Kaya siyempre, kinsa bang tawag taong dili kaya ganahan mo kaon? Kaon lang yun. Ingo si mama, kaon lang ka mo gamay, kaya ego lang mo sikat sa pagkasa habol. <laughs> Just strong enough, di ba no, di ba no? Ego ka ng ego lang, mas, makasikat sa habol. Ayan ko mo daghag kaon, kaya disod ka nung, ka nung, Mamat ma bangungot ka mo kay dako kaon. Hardok man sa ko bangungot. Pero hardok sa ko nga di ko mo kaon. Sige kong debate ana sa gamay pa ko. Pero salamat kay ako'y daog sa debate. And my friend, this is something, it is your responsibility. You cannot make excuses. You cannot serve two masters at the same time. And it is something that you will want. And my friend, you cannot leave, you cannot leave off on the spiritual commitment of other people. November 25, 2011. Around 11.45 in the morning. I was in Salinas Drive. I witnessed to a man by the name of Paul Vio Puli. He was an Italian. He's the floor manager of the Latigola. You remember the Latigola in Salinas Drive? How do you remember that? Okay. I witnessed to him. He was an Italian, but they call him George. So I said, George, you're George? He said, yes. I said, George, if you died today, do you know where your soul will go? He said, I am really a Roman Catholic, but I do not know where I'm going and I'm going to die. Then he said to me, but you know, when my mother died, she told me that he was, she was going to wait for me there. I said, where is there? He said, I do not know. But he was relying on the spiritual commitment, spirituality of her mother, who was also a Roman Catholic. You will rely upon falseness. You will, you will rely upon falsehood. Mark Exonan, I will tell you, if you are worshiping idols, you will never go to heaven. Because What you learn over there in the Roman Catholic, it's falsehood. The idols cannot help you in trouble. The idols cannot save you. They are the work of errors. They have eyes, they cannot see. They have ears, cannot hear. You have, they, they have mouth, they cannot talk. They have legs. But you have to carry them in the procession on your shoulders. 
what kind of God? The true and the living God is not visible. God is a what? Spirit. And they don't worship Him in spirit. But worship Him as worship in spirit and in truth. And so God is looking for something like, don't blame and don't live off the spirituality of another person. In 1976, I witnessed to the father of Brother Edwin Alikaya, no, Pastor Edwin Balidudo. They were living in front of CIT. So I went there at their home and I said, do Kamusta kung pananditan mo abot ang imong ang kamatayon na nakasiguro ka pa nga madto ka sa langit. Ingo kanarabang wa maluwas pananditan mo mubalik ang Ginoo. Sakdaw sak sakdawon. Sakdawon si Daisy iyang asawa ang mama ni Edwin. Sakdawon si Daisy nya mabilin ka kay wa ka magdaw sa Ginoo. Ingon siya nga, siya rosad nga di niya ako pagunitan sa iyang sayal. <laughs> Mga egson, walay makaluwas nga sayal. Bisan pagkamison, di li ka maluwas. Do not ever trust on the spirituality of somebody else. Secondly, you cannot blame others for the direction you will come in. Folks, you listen carefully. You cannot, you cannot change what happens to you. You cannot control what happens to you. But you can control your reaction to the things that happen. I told you this many, many times. I cannot control why I cannot enroll in Far Eastern University Medical School in November 1959. I knew that the, the, the enrollment was going to close November 10. My money arrived November 13. So when I went to the dean, I said, uh, Dean, I would like to enroll. If you will consider me, I would be really be very, very thankful. He said, no more. The doors are closed. And you cannot enter the ark. He was biblical. So I was a little bit, you know, it, it really brought me down. I was discouraged a little bit, but I said, I cannot enroll, I will stop for one semester. I will be delayed one semester. I'm going to do going home and go back to the carabaos, I'm going to the barrio, I'm going to the da, 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 da. I said, I am not going to do that. But, but you know, I did not allow the problem to control me. I used some of the money to buy a plane ticket to come to Cebu. Before I came, I called the dean of the College of Medicine here. I said, sir, I, am, I did not enroll here in Far East University. Are you still open for enrollment, students from here Far Eastern? And Dr. Fornario says, yes, you can come. I will reserve a slot for you. Southwestern, the greatest university in the world. So I enrolled, I came to Cebu, I stayed at the YMCA, room number seven, third floor. I occupied one room, put my books over there, put a table like this and everything like that. To make the long story short, the, I arrived here on Friday afternoon. On Saturday, I looked around, I was looking for a Baptist church. I did not find the Baptist Church. I went in Pilates and I saw the Cebu Christian Center. I said, this must be a church because it is a Christian center. I was looking around and I was looking around and I saw a beautiful lady. 
Her name was Miss Liberty Putulin. I said, Mom, good afternoon, good morning. Are you working here? She said, yes, I'm working here. I'm a teacher. You know my wife is like that. Like, yes, I'm a teacher here. Oh, that's good. So you have services on Sunday? She said, yes. Okay, I'll come back. But in my heart, in my mind, I already said, that lady is pretty. Wrong motive. <laughs> I forgot all the difficulties and problems and challenges I had a few days ago in Manila. Cannot enroll. We'll be, we'll be late. Just like that. Then I said, so, I said, tomorrow is Sunday. So when I came Sunday morning, I was looking for the adult department. I said, where is the adult department? And one of the ladies said, sir, that, that's the room there is, the ladies department. Do you know who was teaching? Miss Putulin. <laughs> and I look around and my professor, in, my professor is there. Two of my professors in, in the College of Medicine was there. The lawyer of uh, uh, China Banking, uh, Attorney Sun, was there. And then uh, there's another, another attorney from Mango Avenue, and another uh, lady also, his, his wife is a doctor. And so there were, there were three doctors. There were three attorneys. There is one principal, Mr. S Mr. Uh, Sulis. And then I look back, and there is my, my, current, my, my commander at their OTC, Colonel Delphine. And when he saw me, he said, so I looked back over there, and he was elevated a little bit, and so we sat down together. He had a little paper, piece of paper, to take notes of Miss Putulin. He was careful in taking those notes. He says, this is a beautiful lesson. I was not listening to the lesson. I was looking at the teacher. <laughs> because if I get the teacher, I will have all the lessons. <laughs> Folks, listen carefully. I cannot blame anybody. Thirdly, no one can ruin your life except you. If you look at the mirror, the person you are looking at is your number one enemy. That's your number one enemy. You say, you look at your face and you do them. You are what you look today and it will never change until you die. Kung guapo ka, magpasalamat ka nga doon ay batig na wong. Ganon, Pastor. Kaya kung why batig na wong, di ka guapo. Kamong mga batig na wong, kamo. <laughs> Ayaw na mo pangandoy nga magwapo. Kay mao ka na ang gibutang sa ginoo ninyo. <laughs> Dili na ito, ha? Ninyo. And really, not, nobody else can ruin you. Your friend cannot ruin you. You are the one that will ruin yourself. Do you know what I'm saying this? Because the things that, the, cho the choices you will make is the one that will make you better or, 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 or bad. Do not blame somebody else. My identity, my responsibility. Thirdly, my priority. What is the most important thing in my life? My priority. Now,
In Hebrews 11, verse number 26, you know what the Bible says? Look at your, your Bible. Esteeming the reproach of Christ's greater riches, the reproach of Christ's greater riches, than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. He was willing to, to take the reproach of Christ's greater riches. Do you know why? Because he was looking at the reward. What, Pastor, what is the reward? Revelations 2.10 Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give you a what? Crown. The reward is a crown for faithfulness. You may suffer today, and focus listen carefully, there is nobody that will not suffer as a Christian. Either God, God has never designed for anybody that you will live the Christian life without trouble. There will be trouble. But Paul said in the book of, uh, in the book of Romans chapter 8, verse number 18, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. But you see, when you get saved, you are an heir. You are rich. Romans chapter 8, verse number 16. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Verse 17. Then heirs. Heirs of God and joint heirs with what? I have a classmate in school, in, 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 you know, in, in, uh, in the university, we have a Bible lesson. Bible class number two, number one, like that. And he was, Mrs. Bermejo said, okay, you read this, this one here, verse number seven, Romans 8, verse 17. And he says, and if heirs, he said, did not say heirs? And if heirs, Joint hairs with Jesus Christ. Joint hairs. Did he not hairs? Hairs. Say hairs. Did he hairs? Hairs of God and joint hairs with Jesus Christ. No one's a boy. Did that one Bible not? And so, the priority. What is the priority? What am I living for? And folks, listen carefully. I'm going to say something that maybe you are doing this. What are you living for? Are you living for power and prestige? I want to be famous. I want to have power. I'm a candidate for paracultural. Mapidis kun si Hal, barangay captain. Maberde sa barangay captain, tanod. Basta mo sa... And many people are like that. There are Christians that all their identity, their environment is the, the world. Are you looking for pleasure? I want to have fun. I want to be happy. I want to feel good. I want to have a comfortable home. Possessions. I will go to the States. I will go here. I will do it. I had classmates. 1964, we graduated. And we had a little conversation. Where are you going? Where are you going? We had already invitation. My invitation was in New York to be in the hospital. And the other one was in Saskatchewan. Do Dr. Principe and I, uh, Uncle Dick, he did not like to go to New York because it's a very big city. He would rather go to Saskatchewan because it's provincial. He went to Saskatchewan, then later on he transferred to, to, uh, to America, but 
Dr. Principe died. Many of us scattered all over the world. I stayed in the Philippines. I stayed in Cebu City. Forty years later, we met. Many of them are coming here. Ang uban upaw, ang uban sakit tuhod, ang uban daghang kwarta, na ay bay sa Amerika, na ay bay dere. Pero ilang mga anak nagkalabulabul ako nun sana. Do you know why they were like that? They had the wrong choice. I stayed in Cebu. I stayed right here in the church. I chose to become faithful to the Lord. I want to serve Him. I became... The, I do not know music, but I was the choir director. They did not know that I didn't know music. But I was, I was, I was doing that. They were following me. They thought I was really... Wa sila kahibaw, nga dili ko kahibaw sa notes. <laughs> Possessions. And folks, if you think of Moses, Moses had all this in the palace. He had all this three. Power and prestige. By the way, prestige means influence. Power and influence, pleasure, possessions. Can you imagine? He had, he had 1,000 women in his life. 1,000 women. There was a teacher in the States, and he said, Children, do you know how many wives had, have Solomon? A, a little boy said, Mom, I know my mommy told me. My mommy told me that Solomon has three, three, let's see, 300 wives and 700 porcupines. Concubines. <laughs> Can you just say it? My mommy told me that Solomon had 300 wives and 700 porcupines. You know what a porcupine is? Mauday nga wakamu mukatawa. He had all this in the palace, but folks, listen carefully. He turned his back on prestige and power, he turned his back on pleasure, he turned his back on possessions. Because that is not the most important thing in his life. He was a Hebrew slave. He was in royalty. No, 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 no. He was not that. Why did Moses turn away from this? Because, number one, things in the palace do not last. Everything, prestige and power, Pleasure, possessions, they are temporary. They are going to pass away. You can have 500, 500 cars. You can have a beautiful home. You can, uh, you can name it what you have in this world. But when you leave this world, you will leave everything. Steve Jobs, the one who is the founder of the Apple. Many of you have the, 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 the Apple. Steve Jobs said, I have reached the pinnacle of my profession. I, can, I have all the money that I can touch with my fingers. But when I see the blinking of the lights in my room and the clanging of the, clanging of the instruments to maintain my breathing, I know I am going to die in a few hours. I recall the things that I have done in the past. In my mind, Rolex and a watch lesser than that will tell the same time. The most expensive shoes and the, most, the cheapest shoes 
that you can wear in this world will have comfort just like any, anything else. The eyeglass that you wear, the expensive one and the cheap one, will give comfort to you the same way. When I leave behind, all the things that I have worked for will be left behind. Things in this world are temporary. You can go to America, you can go to Japan, you can go to Australia and dig all the gold that you can, all the money. I will have this, I will go to America, I will, I will save money for my home, I will save money for a car, I will save money to have a comfortable home, I will take care of my son, I will take care of my relative, and when it is over, you will be just like the three men that went out fishing. All night, they worked so hard. The wind was blowing. They did not go to the seashore. They were just working hard, getting the lines to find out if there is fish. There was none. When the morning was come and a little light was there, three of them looked at the bottom of the boat. And three of them said, we did not get anything. The boat was empty. And many Christians will be like that if you do not make the right choice. You'll come at the end of the road and everything will be empty. You have worked so hard to get all the money that you can. In order to have comfort. In order to have ease. In order to have the things that you, have, you, you, like, you like to do. You like to have a beautiful home. You like to be comfortable in yourself. In yourself. But my friend, if you, come, if, you, if, you, if you come to the end of your life, everything will be left behind and you will come before the presence of the Lord. What did you do with your life? Did you live it good? Did you live it nice? And you will have the right answers because you too will know exactly the choices that you have made in your life. Identity, responsibility, priority, and lastly, your commitment. How much am I willing to commit to what I am going to, to give my life for? How much? Let's find out what Moses had committed to what he was going to do in his lifetime. Verse number 27. Look at verse number, everybody, look at there. The, I, I am closing now. This is the last verse. Hebrews eleven twenty-seven. the Bible says, By faith, he forsook what? Egypt. He turned his back on the world that will give him prestige and power, pleasure and possession. He turned his back. He forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. He turned his back, and his faith can see the future, and he can see God waiting for him and asking him, what have you done? in your life. And at the end of the road, he was going to receive his reward. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. My friend, it is, it is very easy to do your own will. But if you miss God's will for your life, because you made the wrong choice, it will be forever something that is not going to be to be, uh, to be peaceful for you. Let me close with a little story. King Bulkaya is the king of Brunei. Brother Jini told me that in his palace he had eight tons of gold. Ang iyang salamin sa bathroom, the frame is gold. Ang young handrail going to his palace is gold. The sandalier is gold. In his palace, 
eight tons of gold. He had the richest man, probably in Asia. He has a car made all of gold. It is an engine, but there is no gasoline. It's just a show. It's like a show. A car made to show to everybody how rich he is. One time there was a reporter that went to Brunei and asked the king, Mr. King Bolkaya, I see all this wealth that you have. I see the handrails, the frame in the bathroom, and the chandelier in the palace. There is plenty of gold. You are so rich. Is there yet anything that you are looking for? There was quietness in a moment. And Mr. Bolkaya said, I am looking for peace. He had everything that he has. He can buy anything that he likes. But there's one thing that he did not have. He did not have peace in his heart. And my friend, the only one that can give you peace in your heart is the Lord Jesus Christ. Peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. The peace of God that passeth all understanding could not be bought by gold. It could not possess, be possessed by, your, 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 by pleasure. It could not attain. It could never be attained by possessions. It could never be attained by anything, anything else. It could only be attained by accepting Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. And if you are saved today, the things that you do after being a Christian is not something that you can waste simply because the future will hold for you the results of your choices. 1967, I kneeled down there in the girls' dorm that used to be the church. I kneeled down and said, Lord, I don't know why you are calling me. You know I'm busy. And I know you have a purpose for me. Lord, I kneel today because I want to commit myself completely to you. I told the Lord, I'm very busy. You know what I found out later on? God does not call people who are not busy. Because people that are not busy are lazy. God does not call lazy people. He calls people who are doing this and doing this and doing this and doing that. And I surrendered my life to the Lord. Somebody said to me, Pastor, have you ever regretted that you are in the ministry? Never. I wish I have surrendered my life earlier in my life. After I got saved, September 14, 1956. But faith would come and become like I am, 1967, until today. I can say this, and they lived happily ever after. You cannot question what God, I came in, 1967, I became a staff of the church, I was receiving only 25 pesos per week. Pila ko ng 25 pesos, kulang pa sa stockings ni mami. But you know, the good thing is, I was not bothered about 25 pesos. I was not looking for the money. I was looking for the opportunity to be in the ministry. And I have black motorcycle, Honda 90. We go out with, with mommy, visit when we come home, I had bananas at the back, sometimes red rice, cook. Sometimes may ngun pag yod, pastor, nag 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 iha ko mig baboy, mukaon ba mug baboy? Ingo, mukaon ba ya? Basta baptist, brad, di na ni mo pangutan ko mukaon baboy. 
kay di man ta sa Badista. Nga dili mo ka atog baboy, pero mo balig yung baboy. Tanawa na. And God has blessed. Huwag listen carefully. Seriously now. Tonight, I'm going to give an invitation. You have to say to the Lord tonight, Lord, I am going to make the right choice. I'm going to surrender to your will. I want to be available. If you will say that tonight, do you know what will happen? God will will maneuver or will orchestrate the things that you are thinking about in the future and put you in the right place. May you be have, you have decided already about where to go. But my friend, you better review what you have in mind because that may not be the thing that you want to have at the end of the road. Steve Jobs was so wealthy, he had all the money that his fingers can touch. He has reached the pinnacle of his profession. And like any other, he was a wealthy man, but not one centavo of his money he brought with him to heaven. He can go to the funeral parlor and say, give me the biggest coffin. Because I will put all my possessions in that coffin. I will take them to heaven. My friend, tonight, you make a choice. I'm going to kneel at this altar, and I will tell the Lord, Lord, this is my choice. My choice is to turn my back on the whole world because I cannot serve you and the world at the same time. You cannot serve two masters because you will hate the one and love the other. But tonight, I'm going to make myself available to you. And Lord, please help me. Every